Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? Doing all right. New tradition, good tradition. There we are. Got that out of the way. Got that out of the way. All right, Kyle. Um, kind, you know, before we... Kind of, before, kind of sounds like Ohio State. Kind of got that out of the way. Hopefully. Yeah, kind, kind, kind of got that out of the way. Um, yeah, general thoughts about the game before we get into the actual report card. Um, uh, the offensive line without Josh Simmons is broken. Quite frankly. Uh, we put a lot of hope in in Zen. Uh, he struggled, then he got hurt. And I don't know if we got any official word yet on his injury status, but uh, it looked a lot like a, it looked a lot like a, a similar injury to that, that, that Josh got. Um, so listen, I don't know what the answer is for the offensive line. Other than, you know, giving one of the Armstrong twins a 80 number and having them play tight end and just block for the rest of the season and just play with six offensive linemen for the rest of the season. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if there's a young offensive lineman on the team who a young offensive tackle who the the powers to be at Ohio State just thought, well, maybe he's just not ready yet, or maybe we just shouldn't put him out there yet. I, you know, and that that one is deeply hopium. Um, they're just going to have to figure out how to play without a quality left tackle which you can do for a lot of the upcoming season, but you're not going to win a national title unless you figure something out. And I don't know what that something is. And there's a lot of some things you can do to, to make up for a struggling left tackle. There's a lot of things, but they, but they all come at a sacrifice. And, you know, I'm at least partially kidding when I say take one of the Armstrong kids, one of the Armstrong twins, and give them an 80 number and have them play tight end for the rest of the year on the left side. So you have an additional offensive lineman out there all the time. And I, I say that partially kidding. Um, also, like, you know, it, it doesn't have to, you know, it, it could just be G. Scott, but then you lose G. Scott as a passing option. But even if you were to take an offensive lineman out there and put him out there and have another offensive lineman on the field for the rest of the year, then you're still taking G. Scott off the field. Or you're taking, you know, Carnell Tate off the field in order to have two quote unquote tight ends out there if you, you know. Ohio State does not have, unless I, there's a shocking revelation that one of the young guys is just uh, going to, uh, maybe not a great practice player, but they throw him out there and, oh my God, he's actually kind of good, which I wouldn't put a lot of hope in. Ohio State's not going to have an answer at left tackle for the rest of the season. You know, they lost their best player at their thinnest position, and that's bad yeah and, and you, you saw it too throughout the game there just yeah it, it, it was painful it was painful watching that game here it's something interesting that i'm just looking at the stats here jared a lot, a lot of tight ends there was three tight ends played in this game and only three wide receivers so no no okay. ballard no Ennis, no Rogers, none of those guys got in. It was Tate, it was JJ, it was EE. E. That was it. Okay. That was it. So I mean they only was, had it. they only had like 44 snaps, so it's not shocking yeah. that they didn't go to their bench a lot on the offense. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah, I, I don't know what the answer is. 
maybe it is like what Jared said, put an 80 number on, on a lineman and then you play six, six offensive linemen on, on certain plays. Like, yeah, I mean, and there's a lot, there's a lot of things you can do as far as like running back protection and, you know, having a a tight end over there, even if they're going to go out for a pass, but make sure they get a good hit on the defensive end first. Like there's a lot of things you can do, but the more help you provide, you know, the more help you provide that your left tackle, the more you lose somewhere else. Um, not to mention it's going to be like a pretty hard tell or unless that, you know, tight ends just always going to play there for then on, then maybe it's not, I don't know, but it affects how you're going to line up and it affects your packages and it's going to have a lot of downstream effects when you're going to have to constantly be looking after your left tackle. And, you know, I feel like, you know, when, when Zen went down, they moved Jackson out the left tackle and they brought Montgomery in to play left guard. By the way, Montgomery, you stick him in an 80 number and have him go play tight end. That's, you know, early in his high school life, there was a lot of talk as to whether or not he was a tight end or a tackle. Um, so, hey, maybe you stick him out there and you have him play tight end or something. I, I don't know. But they stuck Montgomery at left guard. They put Jackson at left tackle. I Is that a tell of what we're going to see against Penn State? I don't know. Um, it's... Maybe it'll work out for maybe maybe Jackson will actually be a pretty decent left tackle. Um, that's the hope. I think that's the hope there. Yeah, I, I my my hesitation in saying that is they had two weeks knowing Josh Simmons was out and Zen was the choice they made. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which leads me to believe that was their best choice. And I'm not going to stand here and rip Zen while he has a bum knee and and whatnot, but he played not great. Like it was it was bad. Um, and it wasn't it wasn't just him too. There was no no no. The entire I mean, offensive line played Tegra, poorly. Tegra played poorly as well too. Um, right, looking at the looking at the PFF score here, Jared. Surprisingly, Zen actually did. What was it here? He he actually, yeah, he was third. Yeah, third of the five starting. Yeah, linemen, look, look best, at just best, look at best just for for run blocking. Yeah, but yeah, look, look at his score for pass blocking though. Uh, yeah, I know it's it's about as low as it, it can get there. Uh, but Tager T- overall had had pretty pretty sh- uh, poor showing <laughs> as well too. So. If I, if I could get those words out there. So, so the question, question sounds like you were there. trying to say something else for a second. Yeah. I know we're, we're spending a lot of time here. And it's worth, it's worth doing. Though. It's worth doing. So I asked the, I asked the question in our, in our chat before we um, started recording here, Jared, is this a reverse ask Sloopcast? Yes. We'll, we'll do reverse Sloopcast here. Who, who who should be the starting five? Where, where where do you put them at? And what does Ohio State need to do to fix this offensive line issue here? Obviously, obviously, it all starts with recruiting, but obviously that that's not going to fix next week. That's not going to fix in six days here. But what's what are your five? Where do you put them? And what would you like to see Ohio State do to help out? Uh, help out Howard and the in the running backs too, because the running backs had no holes, no holes to to run through, and it, it was just a bad day overall. Offensively, yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought the defense so who, played well, but we yeah. can. So, so who are you, who are your five, Jared? Who who do you have with your five? I mean, right now, I, I mean. I think that it's, I, it's, I think that 
Jackson my, my, at left tackle, I guess. Yep. Jackson, um, I think the three obvious ones, Jackson at left tackle, Fryer at right tackle. Yeah. And, and um, McLaughlin's at center, obviously. At, at center. Yes. Set that center. That, that's your three, in my opinion, I think those are your three obvious ones. Those are your three best offensive linemen, and they should be in, in really the three important, three of the five important positions there. I mean, all five are important, but yeah. your tackles and your center. So yeah, left guard, right guard. You know, they've been I, playing both Saraveld and Chabola at right guard all year. Um, so it, I was a bit surprised. Had a, had, a, when, had, a, had a pretty bad game. Yeah, too. he did. Um, I was a bit surprised. He was going up again. Okay, this also needs to be said. Nebraska has a really good defensive line. And, and, and we said that, like their defensive yeah. tackles. Their defensive tackles were really, really good. And I was I was really surprised. They're not as good how, as Penn State's, though. Yeah. But the defensive yeah, line as yeah. a whole, I don't mean specifically the tackles. Yeah. But, but Butler Butler had himself out. Yeah, he was the game too with all the pressures. Yeah, he was he was half. eating up the left tackle. All right. Yeah. Kyle, we do need to get into the report card. All right, let's let's do that. Yeah. We'll move, I guess, a little bit. We'll move a little bit quicker here, though. But the the, the two guards is is hey, the Zach. is is the is the big question, though. But I yeah, it, I, I don't I don't. I was surprised when it wasn't either Chabola or I was surprised when it was Montgomery, um, only because they've been playing two guys at right guard all year, and. You know, I played on the interior offensive line in high school. It ain't that different. Like moving from left tackle to right tackle or right tackle to left tackle, that can that's really hard. Guard, eh. All right, I guess I guess let's 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 go ahead and jump into it. I know we'll move a little bit quicker here since we spent quite a bit of time already here. Um, offensive game, game plan. plan. Offensive game plan. You know. When things don't work, it's hard to it's hard to hard to grade this when absolutely nothing worked. But also when you I, can't I block, to, you can't block as well too. I I guess I'll give it like a D. Like I'm I'm sure if if the offensive line uh, was able to play well, maybe maybe it would be better. But I I got to give a D. I think I. I don't think there's anything wrong with the game plan. And and unless unless someone can tell me without a shadow of a doubt that Ohio State had a better option than putting the five guys where they put them on the offensive line. If 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 there's a real surprising left tackle on the roster and Ohio State chose not to play him for some reason, then yeah, I'll come back and I'll I'll change the score. But I, I think there's nothing wrong with the game plan. Um Unless you want to say that they should have known that Zen was going to need more help, in which case that's probably pretty valid. So I think I'm going to knock it down. Um, they they needed to better adjust for having nothing going on at left tackle, and they should have known that from the beginning. Um, it looked like they were willing to let Zen go out there and play, and he was not. He was not prepared for that. Um, game management. They had two weeks to figure it out. They did. I mean, Zach, they did. It's, I I hear you, but there might not be an it to figure. I mean, I mean, you you look at it, you look at it two ways. One, like Coach Fry thought that Zen was the best option at left tackle, or Zen is the best option at left tackle. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's, if there was a better option to put out there, I imagine they'd have been put out there. All right. Well, game management, I got I to gotta give a, a D as well. They, I didn't really see much much change on the offense there to, to create more opportunities for a, a struggling offensive line. I, it just seemed like, yeah, I, 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 I was expecting this – big third quarter that we have typically seen through for Ohio State this year, but 
zero points, zero points in the third quarter when that's always been their strongest quarter yeah. all season long. And no change, no change from what I saw in D. Yeah, uh, they they needed to better game plan around Zen, quite frankly. Um, and they they didn't do it. Um, and I'm not saying that that's an easy thing to do. In fact, I spent a good chunk of time at the top of the show explaining why that's not an easy thing to do. But what they were doing wasn't working, and what they came out with in the second half also wasn't working. Um, they're going to need to just, they need not a plan. They need several plans to cover up what is happening at left tackle right now, which is not going to get better from a talent perspective. It's not going to get better. Uh, passing, All right. All right. Pass passing. Honestly, I thought Howard was good. I he, thought he, Howard he was great, one. quite frankly. He, he was, I can't give him had, the plus he, because of the interception, but he, he had yeah, he had that one interception overthrown, but yeah, he started off nine for nine, but then finished off four for seven, uh, in only seven attempts, Jared. Seven attempts in that second half, but only forty four snaps all game will do that for you. But yeah, I thought he was good. Yeah, I'll I'll say I will say an A minus. There, I will see an A minus. Um, that that interception was definitely costly. Um, when they were, when they were moving the ball, and in a few in a few few uh balls that were a little higher than I would like to have seen, but but yeah, really solid, really solid. I mean, considering he's had more, he had more pass rush. Yeah, in his face step up and make the throws. Yeah, uh, he did a really good job throwing it away when he needed to throw it away or run with it when he needed to run with it. Um, he did a really good job evading the pass rush that was constantly coming at him. And yeah, some of the, some of the balls were off target a bit, but he didn't have a clean pocket to throw from notably his best. Some of his best passes of the day were passes. He got to throw when the blocking was good. Shocking how that works. All right, running. running. Now we we're talking about the running backs and not the run blocking. Yes. Which is very hard to separate. It is. I thought I, 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 I can't give it a good grade, nor can I give it a bad grade. So I'll just say to say like a C plus. Like. I'll just stick with a C. I'll just stick with a C. Like. It's, yeah, it, it, it's so hard. You can't do anything. You can't do anything on offense if your offensive line ain't blocking. They're not blocking. You can't pass well. You can't run well. So it's, yeah, I, I'll say C, not a knock to the running backs, but I mean, it is what it is there. I see from the two running backs here, 20 attempts for 54 yards, average of 5.7, 5.6, or not five. Whew. That would have been nice. Uh, yeah. 2.6 yards per carry. Yeah. I, I really thought, and, and no disrespect to Quinchon, who I thought uh, did a great job in the passing game, um, but that's not what we're talking about right now. I really thought Henderson did as good a job as you can do with what was get Like he, he made a couple plays when there wasn't anything to make. I thought Henderson considering he had no blocking actually performed really well. The, the two running, the two running backs were the second and third best um, rated pass blockers on the team. That's sad. Only, only, only behind, only behind Josh Fryer. That's oh my. Okay. You know what? We're moving forward. Um, receiving. And then behind, and then receiving behind them was, was Luke Montgomery um, receivers. Luke Montgomery didn't Great. do any pass blocking. Well, he no, he had one pass block. They threw the screen. They there was one actual offensive play after Zen went down, and everyone got pissed off because they threw the screen. But like, yeah, of course, there was a third and long, and they weren't gonna let Howard sit back there with the makeshift offensive line. So they threw a screen pass. Of course they did, 
It kept the clock moving and you gave Henderson a chance to make something happen. It was a give up play, but I, do you blame him in that case? Uh, receivers? Receiving. I'd say an A. Which would include tight ends receiving and running backs receiving. So yeah. receiving, Carnell, receivers. Carnell, T- Carnell Tate had himself a career game there. Uh, really, really pleased to to see him doing doing well. Uh, what he ended up having, four catches, 102 yards, and a, and a touchdown for the game there. Yeah, really, really, I, w- I was a big Tate fan, a big Tate fan, and wanted wanted to see him continue succeeding in that game. Yeah, solid A. Do we even, we've talked enough about the blocking. Can I just hand out some Fs and move forward? Is that fair? Yep, let's just move forward. Yeah, it's, it's. We've talked it's enough about the blocking. Around. Yep, Fs all around for run block and pass block there. Uh, third, while well, Jared's doing that, third downs horrendous third downs one for 10 one for 10 that, that's a straight up f for me yeah i mean and you have to look no further than the two categories directly above third downs which is the blocking to understand why the third downs mm-hmm. were what they were Jerry, and again I've, I've said this i've said this many times and the number of years that we've been doing this, it all starts in the trenches. You you got to win that. You got to win that line of scrimmage. Even in this pass happy um, football um, era that we're in right now, it still all starts in the trenches with the slobs there, and they're not getting it done. How I mean, if you I mean legitimately, if you go look at the Super Bowls that Tom Brady lost, it's because because there was pass rush. If you can't protect your quarterback, your quarterback can't throw, even if that quarterback is Tom Brady. There are some things you can't do without. And pass blocking is one of them. Uh, The other one is good marketing, which is why I'm taking you to this uh, ad break. Uh, the sloopcast.com always be plugging patreon.thesloopcast.com to support us financially discord.thesloopcast.com to come hang out with us on game day uh digitally speaking of course youtube.thesloopcast.com to watch all of our episodes uh merch.thesloopcast.com spotify apple.thesloopcast.com uh, 7071.thesloopcast.com if you want some merch that doesn't look like podcast merch but just sort of celebrates the state of Ohio that's why we have the second merch store uh, all of that and more uh, can be found or you can find links to those things at thesloopcast.com uh, and of course if you want to avoid the ads that you're about to hear you can join our Patreon patreon.thesloopcast.com for as little as $3 a month here are those ads now All right, Kyle, we ripped the offense up pretty good and for good reason. Let's talk about the defense. Oh, I, I, I'll, I'll start off saying it's it's not all sunshine and rainbows on the defense. I mean, the defense did a really, really good job, much better than what we saw two weeks ago. Uh, but so there, there's still, there's still a, a lot of issues that we, we saw here, especially I was really, really disappointed on the running game. Uh, my early thoughts here, Jared. Uh, they they let up. Um, looking at the number real quick here, almost four yards of carry on the ground. When when really that it, they they've been able to get that done all year, and I just it don't know don't know what happened. Don't know what happened. In my estimation, what happened was that they spent a lot more time on the field than they normally do. Ohio State's defense has had the luxury in most cases this year not to be gassed, not to, you know, have to come back on the field immediately after a three and out. Uh, and that wasn't a luxury afforded to them in this game. Yeah. 66 plays. Which is still not a t- I mean, it, it's a lot more than Ohio State had in this right. game, but it's not. We, we've seen much higher numbers in the past, too. 
So it's not like it's re, it's a ridiculous amount. But I think I think the key thing here to look is that Nebraska was on the field for for about five minutes, four and a half minutes longer than Where, in Ohio State's offense there. How how do you grade the defensive game plan? By the, I, I saw uh, before. Sorry, I saw some changes along the defensive line that I really liked. They were widening. Yeah. They they made a lot of defensive line adjustments and they they did get a lot of pressure. And I don't want to directly say as a result. Because it's also worth noting that Nebraska's offensive line is also not very good, especially in terms of pass blocking. So. You know. There was a deliberate attempt to change the game plan especially along the front four and i really liked a lot of those adjustments there were a lot of great uh a lot of great adjustments yeah it was really really pleasing like jt had a really um really had a great game uh ty hamilton and ty leak really coming through in inside there that we've haven't seen a ton of we we know they're very talented but we just haven't really seen them but i really think we saw that linebackers really getting in there cody simon especially in that second half was just on for fire sure. what was on fire was crucial uh sony styles made some um really important um tackles out in space there so yeah i think i think overall the game plan i thought it was okay um they they didn't Especially in that first half, they really limited um, Rayola from making making big plays, and eventually he he got going in that second half there. But I I was I was okay I was okay with the the game plan. I would say a B. I would All say right. B. Does Chat have a game plan grade? Uh, game management. How how do you think the defense what, what, did what, as what the game your, went? What was your plan, Jared? Oh, I, I gave him an A. I I mean for no other reason than the adjustments along the defensive line. I thought they came in with a really good scheme. I thought they were dialing up a lot of pressure. Um, Rayola was able to get some rushing yards on them, which I think was fine um, because he hadn't really run. I think he had like seven actual rushes coming into this game. And I think he had more than that this game um, or at least close to it. Um, it, how many, what number of rushes did he have minus sacks? Do you have that answer immediately, he, Kyle? He was sacked once. And on the set, he says he had, he was not sacked once. He was sacked more than oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was looking at halves. I apologize. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, he was sacked three times. So he, he rushed six times. So, okay. Which, yeah, like, I think he ran like seven times. I think he was like, 21 official rushes coming into the game, but 14 of them were sacks, something like that. If I remember, I don't know, maybe I'll go back and watch uh, Know Your Enemy again, because I know I said it during that show. Um, so, yeah, he got some rushes that they weren't really anticipating because he didn't do it all year. And outside of one of those, and, you know, one of those rushes, he actually got some decent yards on. The other ones, I think you just let him have that in many ways. But I, I liked I liked the game plan coming in. Um, and I, I I don't think there was really any issues as far as like the ongoing management of the game on the defensive side. Do you? No, I, it wasn't it wasn't outstanding, but I, I thought it was fine. So I'd say, I'd say B. I'd say B as well. I don't watch myself. I that's that's that was the joke that I'd have to go back and watch my own show. Yep, B for me. Uh, what do you got, chat? Yeah, I think they had a B plus for game plan as well uh run stop run, run stop i was a little this, this is where i was really um gonna grade a little bit harshly more harshly on uh Dado rushed for 4.3 yards a carry and uh johnson johnson had a really good second half here i know it's only shows eight attempts for 30 yards but honestly like it seems like each of those attempts that he ran were were crucial like to get really good yards there. And he, he, he averaged almost four yards a carry and, and looking like, and looking at what they did against Indiana. Okay. Like I, 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 I'd expect, I, hold on. I'd expect Ohio state's 
defense to be able to check them in line a little bit more than, than what we see here. Yes, I, I know that they had a lot of turnovers, put the defense in bad situations there, but and, and they had to start passing more. They couldn't run more. I, I get all of that. Yeah, it's it's a real pet peeve of mine in the wake after this game of everyone saying, well, did you see Indiana? Did you see the game against Indiana? And the question I keep asking other people is like, did you see any of their other games? Like the Indiana game is such an outlier for this Nebraska team. Like it was a disastrous game. Things fell apart for them really quickly. They had some really costly turnovers. That game fell apart. And sometimes the momentum just swallows you. It's like a riptide. So I'm I'm really like peeved by everyone going, look at what Indiana did. This Nebraska, this is a this was a five and two Big Ten team. And then I say that to people and they're like, but did you see the Indiana game? Did you see any of the other games? People are walking into this game thinking Nebraska's trash. And don't get me wrong, we should have beat them by more than seven points. I'm not excusing that. But this is not a trash football team. Nebraska's a pretty decent football team who has a lot of issues on the offensive side because their offensive line's not great and their quarterback's a true freshman. But it's a solid football team. And yes, Ohio State should have beat them by more than a touchdown. But this team's a hell of a lot closer to Iowa than they are Akron. And I feel like people were expecting Akron just because of what Indiana did to Nebraska when that game is a very weird outlier. I had to get that off my chest. All right, let's let's move on to the, well, I, I said a D for the run stop. What would have, well, not D, I'm sorry. Um, run stop, I'd say C minus say C minus I expected expected more that's fair chat says C and Jared has a C plus all right um pass rush three sacks three sacks in this game uh three more than the Oregon game so <laughs> an improvement <laughs> hey, I, I'll take I'll take that so I'll I'll, I'll say I'll say like a B I'll, I'll stick with a B for the um, for the pass rush. Made Wyola, especially in that first half, made him really un- uncomfortable. And there was times in that second half, too, that he st- was getting uncomfortable. And when he got uncomfortable, he was inaccurate. There was a time yeah. when he, Wyola was just hitting targets because he hate, had time. But when there was pressure, he, he, w- he, was, he was pretty inaccurate then. Yeah, I mean, Ohio State, or excuse me, Nebraska had a play where – Two of Ohio State's defensive backs literally ran into each other, left the wide receiver wide open. Raiola missed him. Why did they, why, like, missed him bad? Why? Because there was pressure in his face. It's not all sacks. And Ohio State had constant pressure on Raiola all day. Um, Stewart in the chat says um, they went so aggressive, they gave up opportunities up the middle, which I, I talked about during the game plan section of the mm. of the report look, card. Look, I'm fine with look, that. Look at that li- with with Raiola li- specifically, that's fine. I'll, I'll let him have those runs every once in a while. He's not a runner. And he, like I said, he only had seven actual non-sack rushes all season before this. You, sometimes you take those lumps. Yeah. I mean, look, look at the last play. Last play for the defense. JT coming off the edge, um, coming right behind Raiola. He feels that pressure and gets rid of the ball maybe a little bit quicker than he wants to. Very inaccurate throw right to, right to Jordan Hancock for the game ceiling interception. Ma- amazing what pass, um, pass um, rush will do for you. Yeah, yeah inter- interior A, yeah, I, I would definitely would say that interior would play really well. But let's... Okay, but hold on. Had a, Let's, had a great had a great game too. You say that. You say I give the interior an A and the edges a B minus. One of the reasons why the interior was getting sacks is because the ends, the edges 
we're forcing Raiola to step up. And several, if you look, if you go back and look at the defensive tackle sacks, they weren't deep sacks. They were pretty shallow sacks. The defensive ends forced him to step up. He stepped up into a defensive tackle, um, I think, on at least two occasions. I see here that of the Ohio State's how many tackle for losses, I say have 13 tackle for losses in this game. Uh, the def- defensive ends got three of those. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, well, cut- early on, well, I think a lot of those came on swing passes that yeah. Nebraska's and wide receivers why, are incapable of blocking. Yeah. And that's why you, you see here, too, Cody Simon had three tackle for losses. Burke had two uh, tackle for losses. Downs had a tackle for loss as well. Um, and and, and Igbenosin also had one as well. And yeah. heck, even um, Matthews, Matthews had a uh, half a tackle for loss as well, too. So, yeah. Well, Speaking of the defensive well, backs, pass coverage. I'm kind of torn about this. There was definitely some... I, I think it's better. I think it's better than what we saw, obviously, than what we saw a couple of weeks ago. A uh, couple of weeks ago, but uh, what was his name? Um, Jacory Barney, um, just finding ways to get open and finding ways to keep that ball moving for for Nebraska. Uh, Nebraska was five for sixteen on third yeah. downs, and I felt and I felt like. Um, that number 17 had quite a few of those first downs as well, but better, better than what we saw two weeks ago, but still, I still want to see a little bit more improvement from the defensive back. So I say B minus. These were not bad wide receipt. I mean, the, the white Nebraska's wide receivers can't pass block or run block. Excuse me. They can't run block, but they're also not bad wide receivers. Um, Ryola threw 66% for the day notably that's because they were throwing a lot of swing passes and a lot of screens. And that's why you see those defensive backs with all of those TFLs. So that 60% or that 66% rather looks a lot better than it. Maybe you would expect it to be. He only got 152 yards off of 21 completions. That's a good day for the defensive backs. And when you talk about pass coverage, I think we have to include the fact that Burke and a lot of the defensive backs were owning the wide receivers on those perimeter blocks, on those screen passes, on those swing passes. I think you have to include that in this metric, in my opinion. What what, what are we doing for grades? I think uh, Stewart's giving them a B. What, did you give a, a B grade? Minus. B minus. B minus. That's why I have a B. See, Stuart and I are on the same wavelength. All right. All right, tackling. I don't remember a lot of missed tackles. I felt like they were a pretty solid tackling team in this game. And that's not to say that there were none. But again, like on the perimeter, they were making a lot of great, you know, a lot of great tackles, getting off their blocks. There was eight um, missed tackles in this game recorded. I'll be honest. I don't know how to scale that. I, I, I don't even necessarily see that as a metric too often. To be think, honest. The, from, 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 from what I'm seeing on the... I, I would say I would say B- minus as well. So I'm, um, I would just go ahead and grade here. But yeah... I think the biggest culprit here, as we've seen the past few year, few weeks here, which I'm still so very concerned here, uh, is Sony Styles. Sony Styles is still one of the biggest culprits for missed tackles. Uh, we we know how talented he is. We we sure. know he is, and how quick he is, and how disruptive he can be. But he's got to work on work on um, getting those clean tackles. Uh, yeah, I think it's worth noting that he has moved down to the linebacker this year. Is probably still making some adjustments as far as that's concerned. And as far as being a linebacker, you know, he could probably use a few more 
good pounds on him. Um, he has the the frame and he has the height and he has the athleticism, you know, probably could, and you know, I know a lot of people and, and so do I love Cody or I almost said Cody Simon, who also had an amazing day, um, love styles. But you, you also have to remember, despite the fact that he is in fact a junior, um, he also is a early enrollee and I don't mean a spring enrollee. I mean, he skipped his senior year of high school. So he still has, so he's still in many ways, specifically age, a sophomore. Um, I think he could probably use a few more pounds on his frame. And I think that'll help with the missed tackles. Yep. All right. And third downs, I, I'm going to say a C minus. Really? C minus for, for the third downs. Yeah. Like five, four, where was it here? Five, four, 16 on third downs here. It's, I, it's, yeah. It, it's got, it's, it's got, it's got below be 30. Below, it was below 33% though, right? Like. No, no, knowing, knowing this Nebraska offense and how good this defense is supposed to be here, it's, it should be, it should be better. And I'm grading on expectations here. It, it should have, it should have been better. So I'm going to see, uh, just, you can take out the minus, just a C. Don't let me just pressure C. you. Stand by your, stand by your just guns. Just stand by your guns. Don't let me pressure you. <laughs> what's the percentage if you did math is what Zach says or excuse me what Stuart says it's 31 31% like and, and I, I get what you're saying that the Nebraska offense isn't great um, but 31% is not a bad number from a defensive standpoint yeah. Okay. Um, I don't have a good, I don't have a good segue this time. So I'm just going to tell everyone to uh, check out the sloopcast.com to find all of the links for all the other things we were talking about in the first ad break. Uh, you're going to get those uh, Spreaker ads here in a second. If you want to avoid those ads, you can go to patreon.thesloopcast.com and sign up for as little as $3 a month. Um, you can go to our t-shirt store, uh, I'm actually wearing one of our 7071 t-shirts right now. It's a fictional Columbus professional sports team uh, called the Columbus Pilots. I made a bunch of these for a bunch of different uh, cities. Uh, there's the Cincinnati River Pilots. There, uh, There's the Canton Rollers, the Youngstown Mafia. Um, I made up a bunch of fictional franchises around the state, uh, and I made logos and t-shirts for them. Uh, there's the Dayton force. I'm trying to remember them now. I did all the ones I can see on the graphic on the screen. Um, no, you do not get to dox me for $3 a month. That, that is not a part of the Patreon promise. Um, all of that and more here are those ads now. Uh, yeah, here are those ads now. All right. Uh, special teams, and then we'll do our overalls, Kyle. Um, sure. We have kicking. Missed the field goal. Kickoffs were mm -hmm. fine. It was fielding's first miss of the year. Maybe that's worth noting. Maybe it's not. Yeah, but yeah, it it was definitely reachable. Like he definitely should have been able to make that kick. But yeah, I I understand. Like it, it was his for. I'm just confirming real quick as I'm trying to. It is. Trust I'm me. Trying to talk this through. It is. It is his first. Okay. Uh, what what was that? How long was it? That I don't know off the top of my head. I'll I'll, I'll find it later, but. Yeah, I'd say I'd say a C. I mean, I mean, ultimately that that field goal would have resulted in a seven points rather than a four point victory, which is which is crucial. 
Sure. In this, in this close of a game here. So. Stewart says he thinks it was about 46 or 47. Should be noted that he didn't even get close. Like he missed it bad. Um, That's bad. Punting. Um, Unimpressed. Yeah. Yeah, I was definitely, definitely unimpressed. The first punt was good. But he had a good he had a good role, but I think after that I was not it was eh. It was yeah. eh. So I'd say C. I'd say C as well. I feel like we've never really replaced Cam Johnston. No. <laughs> a long time ago. Long time We ago. need the Aussie unit McClarty. Listen, he's I I, I don't know why they're not playing him. Uh I would assume there's a reason. Yep. In returning. Didn't it, didn't it fumble? Didn't it go back yardage? I, I guess a B. I don't know. I yeah, it, <laughs> it was kind of a non-issue can, most can we, of the day. Can we just can we just get rid of the the returning game? Like I, I feel I feel like the returns are just should, not should a factor. We, you just want to cancel this from the report card? No, we we, we we're just going to keep it just for for the rest of the year. Okay. All right. I, I, I really feel like this team does not give a shit about their special teams. Can I say that? I, I I have a really strong feeling that this team does not care about their special teams at all. Mo- most of the returns are fair caught. We are at least, and this is a good thing. I think we are at least kicking the ball out of bounds or not, excuse me, not out of bounds out of the back of the end zone on kickoffs now. So that's, that's great. Um, there was there's one return. I, I think it was towards the end of the game. I, I want to say end of the third quarter or sometime in the fourth. Ohio State didn't pressure. I think it was in the fourth quarter. Didn't pressure yeah. the punt. I was actually literally about to say this. Nebraska's had didn't three. The, they, they didn't blocks pressure punted the punt or <laughs> punts and, blocked this season. And and Ohio State didn't even go back to like do a return block scheme either and i'm like you choose one or the other like set up a return i'm telling you they don't care or or go and try to punt the uh, block the punt there I, if you decide like to do neither yeah i'm telling you they you don't know, i'm I'm, cha- I'm changing my return game. Just, <laughs> oh kyle's D. getting give pissed give me a d like uh, like what what the hell are we doing what are we doing on the return game on both sides punt and kicks like yeah I understand you're not going to get as many as many kicks there, but you you, you average you average 17 yards, two 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 returns, 17 yards. That tells me it's piss poor blocking as well too. You have the stage, sir. Rant. Well, that, that's that, that's that's it. Like hire hire an actual uh, returns coach or someone someone who actually cares okay, let's, for, let's, for the let's, return game. Well, I mean, like not not an actual coach though. Like a so quality control cares. assistant. Someone who cares, who cares <laughs> for the return game. <laughs> Bring Urban Meyer back, just to right. just to do right. special right. teams. Let's move. Let's move on to te- to team ratings here. Team effort. They f- they felt flat to me. They did. I uh, say, especially on the offensive I'd side. I'd say a C. And and it's and it's greatly um because the defense played really well for yeah. for a lot of the game. I agree. All right. Discipline. Only three penalties in this game. Only three penalties. Yeah, I don't feel uh I felt like there were also I feel like there were some yeah. I, uh, I I don't I don't I, have a discipline. I think discipline was game. pretty good. Yeah, I said discipline was pretty good. I'd say like a B plus. Team feels like they don't care anymore. On it, I, I don't believe that at all. No, I, I do believe not believe either. that at all. I think they were just a little flat this game. That can happen for a lot of reasons. Um, and, and quite frankly, when I say the team, I'm actually talking about the offense. I felt like the defense came out with their hair on fire early in the game the the offense 
was I yeah, offense didn't feel all there. But look at the first look at the first three three drives for Nebraska. Three yards, negative four yards. Or, or three plays, negative four yards. Three plays, negative one yard. Six plays, twenty yards. Um yeah, they, they they played really well. They played really well early on. They yeah, the first the first three drives they only let up fifteen yards. Yeah, that's that's really good. Now obviously things evolved and changed and all that, but yeah, they, they came out um on fire there. Execution. Like again, a lot of it a lot of this is because of defense playing really well. I'm gonna say C minus. I think it's that's a drastically fair grade. drastically um because of how how the offense played. Yeah, I mean it's as as we talked about when we were filling out the offensive side of the chart, it's really hard to grade a lot of the offensive aspects when the offensive line performed as poorly as it did. Cuz yeah. like how do you judge the play calling or the game plan or the running backs? when the offensive line just isn't getting anything done, like how do you actually grade those things? Um, so, All right. yeah. All right. And the team overall, I, I get, I guess that averages to, uh, you, you get, you get the win, even though your offense just mightily struggled, didn't even get 300 yards in this game here which is really unacceptable for how how this offense is, the, the talent that's on this offense here. So I, I'd say, I, I, guess a, I guess a C. Yeah. Because um, it, to me, it's almost like the offense gets like a D and the defense gets like a B. So it kind of averages out into a C. Um, so that's just, that's kind of how it feels, feels to me. Uh, that's, that's my take on, on that score. They listen, we can, we can talk about all these things all day and unless they figure out what they're going to do with the offensive line, how they're going to game plan around not having a good left tackle on the field. Right now, and we only have one game to look at. We only have one game to look at. So this is an overreaction. I want to state that up front. What I'm about to say is an overreaction. And it's an overreaction because I only have one data point to look at and that is this Nebraska game. So I'm here just, I want to acknowledge that up front. I'm overreacting with this statement. But as of right now, it's really starting to look like losing Josh Simmons is going to be a season ruining injury for Ohio State. That's what it looks like right now. And if that's the case, that costs that costs Justin Fry his job to not have someone even somewhat ready to take over for for Josh Simmons and when i say that i'm also including the fact that he's been a subpar recruiter so included in that statement is the knowledge that he's been a subpar recruiter so, you know, I understand that, like, if you don't have a guy, you don't have a guy, but it's literally his job to go out and get the guys. But if this ruins the season and with one data point in our hand, it kind of looks like it's going to. That's that that that's your job. 
That's your job if you're Justin Fry. And I, and I very, very rarely will make statements like that. I don't like making statements like that. But you have this amazing roster full of amazing players who, and right now it looks like Oregon's the best team in the country. And you took those guys down to the wire in their stadium, in their time zone. And, you know, I said it then, I said it two weeks ago, I'll say it again now. If that game was played in Columbus, we'd have won it. If that game was played in Indianapolis, we would have won it. And I legitimately believe right now that Oregon's the best team in the country and we would have beat them, which means. But without Simmons, if, if the entire season's ruined because you don't have Simmons. It's heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. Anything else you want to add, Jared? <laughs> Uh, no, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, I will say that the Buckeyes, Buckeyes in the NFL did really well. Um, I saw, saw before we jumped on here that scary Terry McLaurin ended up with a Hail Hail Mary, um, touchdown to, to, um, give Washington the, the win there. And he was one of four Ohio State wide receivers to have over a hundred, hundred receiving yards. Um, That's a cool stat. That's um, a really cool stat. Marvin Harrison Jr., Terry, Olave, and Wilson all topped a hundred yards. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It wasn't Terry. I'm sorry. Noah Brown. It was Noah Brown who had the. Um, oh. I'm sorry. Noah Brown is the one who had the, the um, <laughs> touchdown. I'm sorry. The most surprising Ohio State NFL career, the fact that Noah Brown is still killing it in the NFL, I don't think a lot of people would have seen coming. And yeah, but he it's not it's not his fault for his time at Ohio State. It was just the entire offense's fault. Um certainly not his, as he has proven. But yeah. Anything else, Kyle? And and, and never and everyone will always remember that the game in in Oklahoma and, and what he did in that game. Absolutely. I, I still will. Yeah. I know that's it. That's it. That's all I got. That's all I got here. All right. Still remember the pinned catch. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Stuart. Um, I need to pick a band. I need to pick a band for the end of the show. Um, Kyle, can you vamp for me for a second? Actually, uh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> Jared just screamed. Uh, let's do Paper Morning, Columbus-based band called Paper Morning. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Paper Morning. <laughs>